In this video, we're going to cover adding different hairstyles to our custom characters. This is part of the full character creation series, where I show you how to create 3D visualizers with custom characters. So with their character selected, we need to enter edit mode and then select half the faces for the scale. Once we have the faces selected, we need to duplicate the mesh and then separate it into its own object. Then with our scalp object selected, we can give it a name. Now we can add a mirror modifier and select our base model as a target. We also need to add a short hair modifier and once again select our base model as a target. This will ensure our mesh sticks to the base model as we shape the hairline in the next step. Now we can quickly delete all the materials attached to the scalp just to be able to see it a bit more clearly. Then in edit mode with proportional editing turned on, we can start moving the vertices to shape the hairline for our character. It's important to look at reference images because this part can be a little tricky. Once we're happy with how our hairline looks, we can apply our mirror modifier. Now we're finally ready to start adding in the hair. So in the particle properties tab, we can add a new particle system and select hair. Now we can reduce the hair length to something much shorter to match the length that we're going for. You'll notice that our hair strands are extremely thick by default. So in the hair shape tab, we can reduce the thickness by changing the diameter scale. Let's also make sure to hide our emitter because we don't want to show that in the final render. We can also increase the subdivision so the hair strands look more realistic. Next, we can add children to our hair system to add more density to our hair. Now, to control the styling of our hair, we need to go into particle edit mode. This is where we can control the hair strands more precisely. We can box select a group of hair and then press Ctrl and the plus button to grow our selection till we get to the root. Then we can move, lengthen, and shorten the hair using the various brushes till we get the style that we're looking for. And once again, it's important to have reference images to look at while doing this to get the most realistic result. If we want to give our character a clean fade, the easiest way to do this is by adding another vertex group for our scalp mesh. Then in weight painting mode, we can start painting in different values depending on the length of the hair we want in that area. So on the top, everything will have a weight of 1, while the sides will fade out from a 1 to a 0. We can use the blur brush to blend in the sides more easily. Once we're happy with how our weight painting looks, we can unhide our hair particle system. Then in the vertex group option, for the length and density, we can add in our hair vertex group. And now we have a nice clean fade. Finally, we can change the default material to the principal hair BSDF, which will look a lot more realistic in the final renders. Now, when it comes to creating an afro type hairstyle, the process is pretty much the same, except in the children tab, we now need to change the kink type to curl. This will give us a huge curly ball of hair, but as we reduce the amplitude, the size of the curl will decrease. And then if we start to increase the frequency, the hair will start to coil more and it will start to match the curl of a typical afro hair strand. To give the hair a little more randomness, we can adjust the roughness values. We can reduce the size and play around with the random value till we get the desired look we're going for. Now that we have the correct shape of the hair strands, we can adjust the number of children and the hair length till we get the density and the length that we like. Once again, we can use the same technique of weight painting to give our character a fade. And if we want to change the length of the afro and style it, we can go into particle edit mode and use the various brushes as we saw earlier. Now, when creating dreads, the process is a little different. So once we add in a new hair particle system, we want to add a much higher number of subdivision steps this time, since the hair needs to have much more detail. Then like before, we'll decrease the diameter scale till we get thin hair strands. Next, we want to set the number of hair to zero, and then in particle edit mode, we'll manually add the hair strand so we have more control over where each set of dreads gets added. Here, we'll first add a single piece of hair until we get the right shape of the dread. Now in the children tab, we can set the value to simple, but we'll want to reduce the radius to get the right shape we're looking for. Once again, we'll change the kink type to curl, and then reduce the amplitude and increase the frequency. Lastly, we can adjust the roughness till we get the look we're going for. Then in the particle edit mode, we can start adding in dreads one by one and then comb them into the correct orientation. We can also adjust the length of the hair where needed. Once we have all the dreads added, you'll notice that there's still a lot of empty spots on the scalp. To fix this, we can add another hair particle system, but this time create really short hair to cover it up. When it comes to creating braids, the process is very different compared to the other hairstyles. We need to first create a small set of boxes for the scalp where each braid will be coming out of. To do this, we can start off with our typical scalp mesh, but this time start splitting it up by deleting vertices. Now the shape of the boxes is up to you and the style that you're going for. And once we're happy with how the scalp mesh looks, we can start creating the braids. To create the braids, we first start off with a cube, then we scale it down and apply the scale. Then we need to scale it along the y-axis and add a subdivision modifier to it. 
While still in edit mode, we can duplicate it and start forming the shape of the braid. Next, we need to add an array modifier and a curve modifier. To be able to control the length and the orientation of the braid, we need to add a curve to the scene and then link this curve to our modifiers on our braid object. Now we have a braid that we can control with our curve. If the braid is either too big or too small, we can scale it, but we need to make sure we apply the scale so it always lines up proportionally to the curve. At this point, we can start adding the braids to the scalp one by one, adjusting the length and the shape throughout the process. We can also change the thickness of the braid in different areas by selecting a point on the curve and then pressing Alt S to scale it. Once we have all the braids added, then we can add in the short hair for the scalp as we did previously for the dreads. Finally, we can add material for the hair and make any other adjustments until we're happy with how our braids look. When creating facial hair, we can start off by selecting a couple of faces and then duplicate them and separate them into their own object. Then we can apply the mirror modifier and the shrink ray modifier as before. Now in edit mode, we can start extruding the vertices to create the shape of our beard. Once we have our base mesh created, we can add in our hair particle system and then start shaping the beard till we get the look that we like. And that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. In the next part of the series, we'll be going over adding outfits to our custom characters using Marvelous Designer. I'll see you there.